What is the oldest object in the Royal Society archives? This is a very difficult question to answer, and of course it depends on your definitions, but one candidate is in this box here. So let's take it into another room, open it up, and we'll chat to Keith about it, find out what it's all about. Okay, Keith, old. Obviously not an old box, it looks quite a new box actually. It is, yeah, it's relatively new. All right. Look at that. That is an old book. It has been conserved, but what we want to do is keep it in a state that allows you to see that it's old. Let's see what we can figure out from looking at it. What's that? That's a J. J number... J. J stands for journal book. So this is the journal book of the Royal Society, the first journal book and the first record of a Royal Society meeting. We can see here on the spine this contains records from 1660 to 1663. Right, I'll take my gloves off because we're going to be handling delicate paper. I'm so clumsy with the gloves. Okay, so here's where it all begins for the Royal Society. But this is before the King was even involved. That's right, so this is the very first meeting of the Royal Society after a lecture by Christopher Wren at Gresham College and memorandum, here we go, it all starts here. Christopher Wren's work is known to anyone who knows any of the landmarks of London. That's right. Well, Wren at this point is a, is a natural philosopher, of course, that the fire of London hasn't happened yet. The reconstruction of London that he was involved in hasn't happened yet. 28th of November 1660, he's Gresham Professor of Astronomy. And after he gives a lecture, 12 individuals get together to establish what they think will be a college. These persons following according to the usual custom of most of them, met together at Gresham College to hear Mr. Wren's lecture, just like you said, Keith. Boyle was there, was he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got Boyle, Moray, Wilkins. Yeah. Uh -huh. What did they so, do at this meeting, Keith? So, and after the lecture was ended, something was offered about a design of founding a college for the promoting of physico-mathematical experimental learning. The Royal Society. What's this here? They want to recruit other fellows, other members of this new organisation. So ah. they begin by listing the kinds of people they think might want to join. This is their recruitment list. That's right, yeah. Oh, wow. First meeting finishes. Mm -hmm. What happens next, Keith? Well, next meeting, 5th of December, 1660. This day, Sir Robert Moray mm -hmm. brought in word from... From the court. ...that the king had been equated with the design of this meeting. And he did well approve of it and would be ready to give an encouragement to it. That's right. So the king has been told of this new organisation. He approves. He's going to encourage it. And that will result in 1662 and the first royal charter. So it was still two more years until it really started and the king gave it the signature. But he's that, already... That's the official start, yeah. It's interesting, though, isn't it, that these are obviously some heavy hitters because within a week of this meeting, they've got in the king's ear... Yeah, Sir Robert Moray knew the king well, so they clearly assigned him to go and tell Charles what was going on, and uh, it was a good move. At the same time, December the 5th, yep. 1660, they start this list of signatures. That's right, yes. For people who've seen our videos about the Charter Book, this will look familiar. This is exactly what the Royal Society's Charter Book looks like. It's a series of signatures just like this, but this isn't the Charter Book. It's like a false start. It is where the Charter Book only begins when we have a Royal Charter from 1662. So this is the beginning of them signing up to something about the obligations of the organisation. Got Robert Boyle here. Boyle has signed here. Wren himself has signed. Wren signed, yes. Yeah. Ken Elm Digby here is very well known. I think you and I have different definitions of well known <laughs> sometimes. What's going on with Moray's signature? Can you just see there's a little mark there? Like a little star. Yeah, it's kind of like a little alchemical sign, like a little pentagram. If we look here, here are some other books that have just been collected by the Society over the years. So there are many, many older things at the Society, but mm. this is the oldest Royal Society thing. That's right. But of course, there's old and there's old. This is true. We'll quickly show you something else really, really old, just for fun, as I shut this book. Because if we go back to 1976 in March, mm -hmm. there was a great explosion in the sky above China. And at a place called Kieran, a huge meteorite broke into pieces and smashed into the ground. And it has been a really fertile area of research ever since. 
and one fragment of that meteorite has found its way here to the Royal Society. Conveniently, here it is. Let's glove up in case we start getting hardcore and we will move into position something that is literally billions of years old. Indeed, yeah. Depending on who you believe, what, maybe two and a half billion years? Two and a half, three and a half maybe, yeah. What's a billion years between friends? Exactly right, yeah. So this is a piece of the Kieran meteorite in this gorgeous display case. Yep, it's, it's letting it down a bit, I think, but you know, it's, it's still a nice gift to get. Keith is not happy about the display case, <laughs> just quietly. So this is kind of just sort of a cultural gift from our friends in China? Or? That's right, yes. When uh, we get uh, delegations visiting the Royal Society or the Foreign Secretary visits overseas, quite often you will get gifts and usually there'll be uh, books or information about uh, the organisation's concerned. Just occasionally, though, you get a really good present. Can we look at it? Can we get it out? Or? Yes, it's, it's screwed into this uh, acrylic box, so we'll have to uh, manoeuvre it a little bit, take the screws out, and uh, see if we can get at it. Come on then, let's do some science. Let's do some. <laughs> I mean, the, the red cushion is nice. Uh, if, you, if you like your plush yeah. cushions. I like plush cushions. There we are. Here we go. So there part of a much, much larger rock floating through space until a fateful day in 1976 when it came face to face with a big planet. Oh, it's, uh, it's much denser than you might expect. For those who are wondering, this is a chondrite meteorite. Wow. So floating around in space for billions of years and in your hand. It makes that 1660 documents suddenly seem a little bit less impressive. A bit like yesterday, really. He's going to choose a card. We're going to go down to the archives and find out what it is. It's going to go over here. Why not? Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. Um, right yeah. there. All right. What have we got here? Oldenburg H giving him notice of his being elected into the Royal Society. Oh, okay. Keith has to fill out a call slip. 1667, this is really early days of the Royal Society, Keith. Oh. 